Alien parasites? Found footage motion sickness? Bad sound mixing? There's plenty of reasons why some people never made it to the end of these sci-fi adventures. The legendary filmmaker Stanley Kubrick is undoubtedly one of the greatest directors of all time, but he's no stranger to controversy. Kubrick's 1971 masterpiece, A Clockwork Orange, generated significant blowback during its initial release, becoming one of the rare mainstream films to be released with an X rating from the MPAA. Before the NC-17 rating was created in 1990, the X rating was used for films that were too extreme to simply be rated R. Many audiences avoided X films because they were assumed to be pornographic. A Clockwork Orange is a deeply disturbing film about the institutional failure to curb youthful violence. The film centers on the young gang leader, Alex DeLarge, played in a career-best performance by Malcolm McDowell. Alex leads a pack of young men to rape, pillage, and otherwise brutalize people in a futuristic version of Britain. One of the more disturbing elements of Kubrick's direction is the association of Alex's ultraviolence with familiar music. Alex loves the work of Beethoven and even sings Singing in the Rain during one of his crime sprees. Over five decades later, A Clockwork Orange holds up as a powerful examination of the generational divide. It's also just as disturbing as it was during its initial release. The film was so shocking for 70s audiences that some attendees chose to leave the theater entirely. Stop it! Stop it! Please! I beg you! It's a sin! It's a sin! In hindsight, this may have helped to prove Kubrick's point, and the controversy the film generated is one of the reasons it became a cult classic. Ridley Scott's 1979 masterpiece Alien remains one of the most important science fiction films of all time. While it certainly didn't invent the subgenre of outer space horror, it proved that the two popular genres could be merged in a way that mainstream audiences would find exciting. Alien was released during a period of growth for space movies after the success of 1977's Star Wars was followed by Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Superman the Movie, and Moonraker. Although Alien was considered a success and inspired an incredible franchise, it did generate some controversy during the first few screenings. In J.W. Rinsler's extensive non-fiction guide to the film, The Making of Alien, the author chronicled the extreme reactions that the film's violent content provoked. Any audience member that brought their children expecting a fun, exciting space adventure would have been shocked to see the famous chestburster scene. The Alien creative team recalled that some audience members became nauseous during the first screenings, and others had to leave the theater because the violence made them so uncomfortable comfortable. Thankfully, these reactions weren't widespread enough to prevent Alien from kicking off one of the coolest science fiction sagas of all time. There are certainly plenty of gross moments in the other Alien movies, such as Ripley's Nightmare in Aliens and the intense birth sequence in Prometheus, but there are few moments in film history as terrifying as the reveal of the chestburster. Well, the sooner we patch this thing up and get out of here, the sooner we can go home. This place gives me the creeps. There were high expectations for Richard Kelly's second feature film, a dystopian satire called Southland Tales. Kelly had proven that he was a director worth watching with his 2001 feature film debut, Donnie Darko. So all eyes were on him as he prepared his incredibly ambitious new project. Darko fans were excited. Not only was Kelly telling another original story, but he had some politically relevant messages to share about the disparity between political parties, the worship of celebrity culture, and the dominance of corporations. Donnie Darko employed many then-unknown actors, but Southland Tales starred Dwayne Johnson, Sarah Michelle Gellar, Sean William Scott, and Justin Timberlake. Unfortunately, Southland Tales received a disastrous response when it debuted at the Cannes Film Festival in 2006. After the first screening, respected film critic Roger Ebert wrote of his experience. After I saw the first cut of Kelly's Southland Tales at Cannes 2005, I was dazed, confused, bewildered, bored, affronted, and deafened by the boos all around me. When the film made its way to theaters, many people found themselves walking out of the two-and-a-half-hour affair. However, Southland Tales has since emerged as a cult classic, and its themes are even more relevant today. This wasn't the only time that the Cannes Film Festival shamed a great film that was ahead of its time. Taxi Driver, The Tree of Life, Holy Motors, and The Neon Demon are all films that are worth watching with a more level-headed perspective.
This is one where the audience really should have known better. It was clear from the very first trailer that 2016's Deadpool was going to be a very different type of superhero movie from the typical MCU and DCEU fare. Deadpool exercised the full potential of its R rating, being about as violent, sexually explicit, and obscene as you can get. The Merc with a mouth himself might be a big goofy child at heart, but Deadpool is most definitely not a movie for kids. That being said, some parents still managed to mistake Deadpool for just another family-friendly superhero movie and brought their children along to the theater. There were reported walkouts and requests for refunds by families who were shocked by the film's content. The controversy didn't end there, though. More recently, the R-rated Marvel films Deadpool, Deadpool 2, and Logan were added to the Disney Plus streaming service. The Parents Television and Media Council criticized Disney for their inclusions, saying, After decades of corporate brilliance establishing itself as the world's most trusted brand for families, today's C-level suite at Disney has decided to flush it all down the toilet. There were some younger superhero movie fans out there that wanted to see Deadpool and were disappointed that it was rated R. In order to satisfy these youthful fans, 20th Century Fox released a PG-13 cut of Deadpool 2, titled Once Upon a Deadpool. Although this version cut out some of the most extreme moments, it included some deleted scenes that didn't make it to the original cut, and a cameo from Fred Savage. You're in a PG-13 version of Deadpool. Filtered? Through the prism of childlike innocence. I'm a grown And nobody man. does childlike innocence like you, Fred. Nobody. Disappointment isn't the only reason that audiences walk out of a movie. Sometimes a viewer may be really interested in the film's narrative, but physically disturbed by the content of the film itself. Even if you're watching something really great, it's probably not worth getting sick over. More than any other genre, horror films have a history of making their audiences nauseous due to unusually graphic sequences. The 2008 science fiction film Cloverfield was shrouded in mystery before it was released. Given the cryptic nature of the trailers, some fans took to the internet to speculate about what the film's plot really was. This was during a time in which found footage movies weren't as common, although The Blair Witch Project made the subgenre popular in 1999. Found footage films weren't yet the phenomenon that they are today. Audiences had no idea what to expect from Cloverfield when they arrived at theaters to watch it, but perhaps a warning may have been nice. The shaky nature of the found footage filmmaking techniques took some viewers off guard, with a number of individuals reporting that watching the film gave them motion sickness. Despite generating walkouts during its initial theatrical run, Cloverfield was a big success, and it has since gained two sequels that ditched the found footage format for more steady cameras. At this point, everyone is probably sick and tired of hearing controversial opinions about Star Wars The Last Jedi. It's a film that still divides Star Wars fans down the middle. The Last Jedi is a film that dared to do the unexpected. Instead of catering to nostalgia and fan theories, Ryan Johnson's subversive adventure offered a more nuanced perspective on the role that the Jedi have played in galactic history. After all, as Luke Skywalker notes, the Jedi Order's ultimate legacy is one of failure. Unfortunately, The Last Jedi was met with toxic responses from online fans, many of whom attacked the film for its diverse cast. However, there is one Star Wars fan who decided to leave the theater for a completely justified reason. In an extended interview with Stephen Colbert, broadcast anchor Anderson Cooper revealed that he and his partner had to leave the theater about 45 minutes in. Cooper stated that he was simply overwhelmed by the stress of his job and that he couldn't give the film the attention that it deserved. Yeah, no, I was like, this deserves my attention. Yes. I'm not giving it my attention. It's like if you're making love to someone. In the middle of it, you go, you know what? I'm not giving this my all. <laughs> Hopefully, Cooper and his partner got the chance to catch another screening of the film when their minds were clear. Their struggle is understandable, since at 152 minutes, The Last Jedi is the longest entry in the franchise so far. If you've ever attended a film festival, you know that it can be a stressful experience. Choosing what films to see, crafting an agenda, and getting tickets before they sell out requires a lot of planning and preparation. When you sit down for a screening, you want to have a rewarding experience. It's disappointing if that experience doesn't live up to your expectations, which a number of festival goers thought was the case when they became some of the first people to see Under the Skin. Jonathan Glazer is a filmmaker whose stylistic impulses certainly aren't for everyone. 
Sexy Beast is far from a traditional gangster movie, and Birth is a very unusual mystery thriller. That being said, Under the Skin is perhaps the most baffling complex project to date. This body horror film follows a mysterious alien who inhabits a woman's body and prowls the streets of Scotland in a van. She lures men to their deaths inside a dark void in order to learn more about them. Under the Skin is a film that was seemingly made to generate controversy. While it's been hailed by some critics as a masterpiece, it was also a box office disaster. It certainly sparked mixed responses when it was screened at the 2013 Venice Film Festival. Although plenty of reviews were positive, Hollywood reporter journalist Scott Feinberg reported that many audience members likely walked out because they were bored by the film's methodical pacing. Time may have worked out in favor of Under the Skin, however, as BBC critics ranked it as one of the best films of the 21st century so far. Any film directed and written by Christopher Nolan is bound to be pretty complex. That being said, 2020's Tenet is likely the most complicated film in Nolan's entire filmography. The film explores the concept of time inversion and features a nonstop barrage of expositional dialogue. There is so much information being thrown at the screen that even the characters struggle to understand exactly what's going on. Don't try to understand it. Feel it. Unfortunately, some viewers had a hard time comprehending Tenet, but that wasn't just because of its narrative. Some criticized the film's audio mixing and complained that the dialogue was difficult to understand. The mixing was such an issue for some fans that they decided to leave entirely. It's definitely an understandable reason to leave. After all, if you miss just one line in Tenet, you might end up completely lost. This isn't the first time that a Christopher Nolan film's audio mixing was the subject of controversy. After the prologue of The Dark Knight Rises screened in front of select IMAX showings of Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, some viewers found it nearly impossible to understand what Tom Hardy's Bane was saying under that mask. Interstellar faced backlash as well, as audiences reported that the music and sound effects were so loud that they drowned out some of the dialogue. David Cronenberg is a brilliant filmmaker, but he seems to take pleasure in pushing people's comfort level. A new Cronenberg film is an event, and it's always interesting to see what tricks the old master has up his sleeves. Cronenberg first rose to prominence thanks to his foundational work in the body horror genre. He created classics such as The Fly, Naked Lunch, Scanners, and Videodrome. Although Cronenberg's more recent work has included crime thrillers like Eastern Promises and social satires like Maps to the Stars, he returned to the body horror genre in 2022 with his sci-fi feature, Crimes of the Future. When it was announced that Crimes of the Future would premiere at the Cannes Film Festival, Cronenberg wasn't upset about people potentially not sticking around for the full experience. He told Deadline, There are some very strong scenes. I do expect walkouts in Cannes, and that's a very special thing. During the premiere, the particularly disturbing opening scene prompted many viewers to leave the theater. Thankfully, Cannes didn't just invite Cronenberg to the festival in order to ridicule him. According to Variety reporter Zach Scharf, Crimes of the Future received a standing ovation from the audience members who chose to stay.